Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, my name is Shannon Iger. I'm a graduate student in Marcos Group. And today I'm going to be discussing um, how to get started using Pocurdo. So here's um, an agenda for what I'm going to be talking about today. First, I'm going to give an overview of the general workflow that you would use anytime you run a return calculation, um, just to give context and some definitions for what I'm going to be talking about in the rest of the talk. Then I'm going to go over how to um, use the Perturbo website, which is a really good resource for you to use as you're running return calculations. Um, next, I will discuss how to download and install Perturbo um, using from Quantum Espresso and 190, which are its dependencies. I will then introduce Perturbo Pi, which is the Python package that is designed to complement Perturbo. Um, I'll introduce the test suite, which is something you can run to make sure that your code was, oh, that, to make sure that Perturbo was properly installed. And then finally, I'll go, I'll do a brief introduction um, on Docker. So, we are going to be providing what are called Docker images during the workshop, um, which are going to give you the give you the ability to run Perturbo while bypassing the whole downloading and installing Perturbo step. So while I'm going through this tutorial, um, the goal is for you to just follow along and understand the steps I'm going through, but not to actually do it yourself. So just like pay attention, understand what I'm doing. Um, we'll have a hands-on session tomorrow in which we'll then show you how to run for Turbo using the Docker images, um, which will be a lot simpler than the steps I'm going through today. The steps I'm going through today will be beneficial for you in the long run if you use for Turbo after the, the workshop. Okay, so um, here's a schematic of the um, workflow of using for Turbo. Um, the goal of this slide isn't so that you understand every single step because that's for later lectures. The goal is just so that you understand the terminology I'm going to be using in the rest of my um, tutorial. So the first step is running Quantum Espresso. Um, from Quantum Espresso, then you can input your, your files into one of the two um, Perturbo executables. So the first Perturbo executable is called qe2pert.x. This is the interface between Quantum Espresso and Perturbo. Um, it processes the Quantum Espresso calculations and computes the electron phone matrix elements in the Lamy basis, which are key for all of the um, calculations that Perturbo runs. So this EPR file is really important. Um, it's the one that is um, circled in red. It's an HDF5 file, which contains the results from qt.x, and it's required as an input for all Perturbo.x calculations. Um, the reason it's an HDF5 file is because this is a really portable file format, so it's really convenient because all you need is this EPR file and you can run for Turbo on different machines. Um, HDF5 is portable between a lot of different machines. All right, so then after you've generated the EPR file, you can run the second for Turbo executable, which is for Turbo.x. This is the core executable of for Turbo, um, which performs um, the calculations you want to run. So the calculations it performs will depend on one of the input parameters called calc mode. So there's several different Perturbo calc modes. Um, for example, one calc mode could be trans-RTA. This is essentially a transport calculation. It will solve the Boltzmann transport equation um, in the relaxation time approximation, which if you don't know what that is, that's really fine. We are going to learn about it um, later today. But it'll compute things like the mobility and conductivity and things like that. All right, so after you run Perturbo.x, then you'll get several different output files, which I'll describe in more detail in the next slide. From these output files, one optional step is to use PerturboPy, which is the Python package that we've designed um, to post-process your Perturbo results. So it's very convenient to use PerturboPy to export all the data from the Perturbo output files to Python. So you can um, then do your own post-processing, or you can use the built-in methods that PerturboPy offers to like analyze and populate. All right, um, briefly before we go into the website, I want to go over the um, three different output formats that Perturbo, Perturbo uses. The first is YAML. Um, so every Perturbo calculation will output a YAML file, which contains the inputs and outputs from that Perturbo calculation. 
Um, it's very convenient to use YAML files because they're easily read by high level programming languages such as Python and Julia. And this is a file that can be read in by a perturbo file. The second file type is um, HDF5, which is what I already mentioned. Um, this primarily stores data that's too large to be reasonably stored in a YAML file. Um, one example of this is the EPR file that I discussed on the previous slide, which stores the results from the QE to PERT.S calculation, um, namely the electronic program matrix elements. Um, so just something to keep in mind, um, you can use what's called HDF view, um, which is a software that will allow you to open and visualize the HDF5 files. But this, this can also be easily read by high-level programming languages, such as Python and Julia, and um, can be read by Perturbo Pass. And then finally, we mentioned this um, ASCII text files, which we call like the legacy format files. Um, Perturbo still outputs these files, but all the information in these files is redundant. Uh, they're all ready in the YAML and HDF files. It's just that um, we use this format for a while. So it's important to just understand that those files don't contain new information, they just contain the same information in a slightly different format. Okay. Um, next, I want to go over the website because it is a really great tool um, while you're running your particular calculation to use the website as a resource. So let's visit the website. Okay. So on the home page, um, you can see a few different sections, download, tutorials, workflow, inputs, form, forum, and, and post-processing. Um, so download is pretty self-explanatory. It gives you instructions on how to download and install the code, which I'll go in, over in more detail um, in the next couple of slides. I just want to point out a few things. First, um, note that for Turbo depends on a couple different um, other packages. So it depends on the HDF5 library because it uses the HDF5 format for some of its files. And then also Quantum Espresso. Um, within Quantum Espresso, we also require um, 1A90, which will install along inside Quantum Espresso. Okay, so the instructions are here um, for your reference, for example, after the workshop. Next, in the Perturbo download and installation section, um, it gives you instructions on how to download the code. So there's a form that we ask you to fill out. Um, I'll go over this form in more detail, but basically we just want your information and then we'll send you a link to the code. And then after you get that link, then you can follow the rest of the instructions um, for installation, which again, I'll go over in um, the next couple of slides. I just wanted to, you to be aware that it's here on the website as well as your reference. Okay, so the next section is tutorials. Um, so if you recall, I said that the perturbo.x executable um, runs calculations depending on the calc mode input parameter. So these tutorials are organized by calc mode. So for example, on the left here um, are some subsections for the tutorial. So let's stick with the example of transport. If I wanted to run a transport calculation, I go to this transport section. Let's say I want to run the trans RTA um, calculation which again, you'll get more details on what those all mean in the next couple of um, docs. It tells me um, a directory where I can get all the input files for the tutorial. It tells me what it computes, which is in this case, the um, photon limited conductivity and mobility. Um, and then it provides the input file, the command to run it, and a description of all of the output files. So these are all the output files. Um, and then also the legacy format ASCII text outputs that are, again, redundant, but um, will still be outputted. So if you are curious what's inside of them, you can look them up. So these tutorials are very detailed and it's very helpful for while you're running the trigger calculation to reference them. Okay, let's go back to the home page. Um, next, I want to discuss this interactive workflow. So this interactive workflow is also a really good tool. It's um, very convenient to help you, first of all, understand which order of the calculations needs to be run in, and second, to understand or how to navigate the website. So for example, again, let's say I want to run a transport calculation, so this calculated trans down here. I see that first I need to run this DFT and DFPT calculation. Those are the calculations from Quantum Espresso, um, which, I, which you'll get more details on in the next 
um, tutorial. Then I need to run the QET part calculation. If I click on QET part and scroll down, it tells me what it computes, which are the electron phonon matrix elements. It tells me all the required files. These are files from the quantum espresso step. And it tells me the output files. And I can click on those for um, more information and for an example of those files in the tutorials. Another thing the interactive workflow is very useful for is um, getting template input files. Because for each calculation, it'll give you the input file, and you can just modify this for your own needs. So you can modify, um, for example, the k points here, um, whatever your prefix is. You can modify all these input parameters, but it's a very good starting point to use the interactive workflows with the input file. All right, so after I run the QT part, um, I let's say I want to run the uh, imaginary self energy calculation. Again, same thing, tells me all the required files, all the output files. And if I click on them, I get more details. And then finally, I can go to the transport calculation. Or sorry, it should have been set up in um, imaginary self energy and transport. So again, if I click on any of these files, um, it gives me a description and also an example in the uh, tutorials. So that's why it's really helpful to navigate the website because it gives you links to where all these files are described. Okay. Um, the next section is the inputs section where all the input parameters to particular calculations are described. So this is helpful when you're preparing the input um, files. It tells you the input name, the default value, and it also tells you um, whether it's mandatory and for what calculation type. So for example, most of these are mandatory for all calculations. But this, for example, this full screen min is optional for all these calculations. So this is helpful when you're preparing input files. Okay, and then the last two sections are pretty simple. This is a forum for um, if you have any questions or have any issues. And then this is a link to the um, Perturbo Pi website, which I'll discuss um, in a little bit. Yeah. Okay, Whoa. we're going back here. Again, I think um, obviously download is an important section. Um, the workflow is very, the workflow section is very um, useful to visualize the order of calculations and navigate the website. And then the tutorial section probably has the most detail in terms of um, describing all the files. Okay, so next I'm going to discuss how to install Perturbo. So the first step is to install the um, Perturbo's dependencies. So those are Quantum Espresso 1A90, which we're going to install within Quantum Espresso, and the HDFI can um, so you may already have the HDFI library in, um, installed somewhere on like whatever supercomputer you're using or you're using locally. If you don't, then there's instructions that are um, somewhat straightforward on the website. Um, next, we're going to discuss how to download um, Quantum Espresso. So I'm going to open a terminal here. Okay. Since it takes some time to actually compile Quantum Espresso, I'm going to show you the commands, but I'm not going to actually compile it. Um, but you can just follow along with the commands and compile it yourself later. So first, I need to um, get the um, tar file from this link here. So this is getting the um, Quantum Espresso tar file, and then I need to untar it. Take a second. Um, while we're waiting, I'll just mention that after we um, open this file, there's a configure step. I'm going to configure it with like no additional options, but you would want to add options depending on your um, individual machine and optimize it for your machine, basically. So for that, for information using that, you can refer to the Quantum Espresso website, um, which I put on the PowerPoint here. Um, another thing to note is that you can either um, specify the HDFI file in the Quantum Espresso um, 
make file by adding this flag with HDF5 and then the path to the HDF5 library, or you can put it in the next step when you do for turbo. So this is just like an optional thing here that I'll just put you. Okay, so then we want to change into the final espresso directory and we'll run the configure. Again, um, we might want to add flags here like with HDF5 so that it knows where the HDF5 library is. So I'll just do the default here. And I'm not going to actually run it all the way through. So I'll just cancel it. But the next step would be this make pw page pqwf. And it's not going to work because I didn't run the configure step. Um, but if you run the configure step, then this should work. Um, each of these means there's a different executable that um, is needed in Cloud Espresso. So the pw.x will calculate the um, electron structure and the wave functions. It's basically trying to use a ZFT. PH.x uses ZFPT to calculate um, the phonons. TP is just like a post processing executable, um, so for example, like counting the bands and stuff. And then W90 is um, WANU90. So you can either install WANU90 here, like in this line, or you can get it, use the instructions from the separate WANU90 website, but this is simple. Okay. So again, and that'll take a second um, to run. But after you've installed Cloud Espresso, I'm going to change to a different directory where I already have it installed. Uh, one, one very stupid question. If I make, make all, all of these are included? Um, or... Yeah, plus more. So okay. it might take. Yeah, OK. These are just the ones necessary for it. For sure. Okay, so then the next step is to download and install for Turbo. So first we need to download it by going to the form, which I showed you on the website earlier, or the link to this form was on the website. But I'll just show you this form real quick. Okay, so um, you basically just have to fill out your information, your email, your name, institution, etc. This um, GitHub username field is optional, but it's highly recommended because if you give us your GitHub username, we'll add you to the Perturbo um, GitHub repo. And then anytime we make a new release, um, you can just do git pull and it'll give them the new version of the code. Alternatively, if you don't give us a GitHub username, we'll just send you like, um, like a zip file of the code and you'll have to like email us every time we make a new release if you want the new release of the code. So we highly recommend using uh, GitHub. Okay, and then this is pretty self-explanatory. You submit it, um, and then pretty quickly we will respond and send you the code or add you as a um, add you on the GitHub repo. Um, also note that if you um, input your GitHub username and the email attached to your GitHub username is different than the email you put in the email section, you're going to get the email from the one attached to your GitHub um, using it. So just All right, so now let's assume that we've been added to the GitHub repo. The next step is we can go to the GitHub repo. Okay, and then here on the code, we just want to um, copy this. And yeah, just here, um, recommended to clone the code from the GitHub repo, so you can simply git pull to get the most release whenever you make a release. Okay, so now we have the code. Let's now compile it. So let's open the terminal again. Okay, so now um, let's do ls. Let's, let's, let's change to the unit to turn on the directory. Okay, so you can see that there's a few different folders. We have pert src and qet pert src. These are the source code. These are these folders contain the source code for the perturbo.x executable, 
and QE support .x executable that I described earlier. Um, we also have a test folder, which I'll go into more detail later, but this is how you can test if you correctly installed it. Um, and then we have this config folder, which is I'm going to change it. Okay, so this config folder basically has a bunch of different make.sys um, template files or example files. Um, so each one is um, made for a different compiler like iFortran um, and whether parallel versus serial basically is whether or not you want to enable um, open MP parallelization. So like for example, let's open the iFort parallel. Okay, so there's a few things here. Note that these flags are on because I chose the parallelization um, make that this version. Um, and it's for the Intel compiler. And then these flags here, um, these are the most important flags that you want to, you'll want to modify. So if you compiled Quantum Espresso with the option that I showed with this option, if you configured it with HDF5, you don't need to specify these paths to the HDF5 library. If you didn't, if you just ran like dot configure, then you'll want to modify these paths um, with the, whatever path to your HDF5 library. And then other than that, it should be pretty um, straightforward as long as you choose the one that matches your compiler and your preferred parallel location. So, so I compiled this with this um, with HDF5 option. So I'm going to then copy the um, file I want, which is okay. So I'm choosing the make i4 parallel .sys file, and I'm going to copy it to um, the main perturbable folder as just make that sys, and that's how that's the file that's going to be used during the compilation. Um, I'm going to get back here. Okay, so yeah, just to note, like you choose whichever make that sys file you want, and then if you didn't compile Quantum Espresso with the HDF5 library specified, then specify it in these under these files. Okay, and now I'm going to show I'm not my thing. So. While we're waiting, does anyone have questions? Oh. Yeah. If we're running these calculations like on the local cluster on I call that can we we don't have to do these steps, right? We can just use whatever's been downloaded by users here or is maybe you have to download it. Um yeah. I'm not sure if it's like a, a thing to some yes no if it's like we don't have a public version, or we don't have a perturbo module on HPC cluster. I assume that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't have the module yet, so. You uh, do not? Yeah, uh, definitely not for the new, newer release. So I think it might be helpful to uh, compile it, uh, compile quantum space and then put it on top. Are you, is there open, something like open source on errors that would be usable? Uh, yes, in fact, there is a perturbo module on NERS that you can use. Uh, the website contains more information on how you can access that yes. module. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So, okay. So, I finished here. Um, let's just collect and then we go to the bin folder. We see we have our two executables, perturbo.x and QE to So, it works. Okay. So yeah, that basically summarizes how to download and install Perturbo. Um, next, I want to discuss Perturbo Pi, which is the Python package that um, complements Perturbo, basically. It has two main features. Um, one is the test suite for Perturbo. So basically, the test suite for Perturbo is um, a series of like Python methods that are in Perturbo Pi that you run in the Perturbo test folder to test the calculations. So after you've installed Perturbo, it's really nice to um, use Perturbo Pi to run this test suite. That way you can make sure that you installed it correctly. Um, it's also really good when you're like developing the code if you want to modify 
the source code to make sure you didn't break anything or to add your own tests even um, as you're developing a new feature to make sure that your new feature is working as intended. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more detail on the next slide. The second feature is post-processing. Um, so Perturbify post-processing is a, a Python suite that um, allows you to export data from the Perturbo output files to Python very easily. So it basically just expedites the data extraction process. Um, and then in addition, it contains um, several built-in methods that allow you to generate plots and perform calculations. Um, so you can use it to you can use it, um, the built-in methods to analyze your data, or you can just use Perturbify if you want to export the data to Python and then do your own analysis with your own Python scripts. Okay. Um, and there's a Perturbify website in GitHub repo, which I'll discuss in a second. Um, there's two ways you can install Perturbify. You can either go to the public GitHub repo and then do the same thing. We copy this. Do that and then let's say we want to go to all right so I'm going to get clone the perturbo five repo And then you can change into that folder. And you can do the install dot. And that'll install the pie. Alternatively, the simpler way is we have uploaded it to um, pip, which is like the Python package manager. So you can simply do pip install for triple pie. Um, you can do this from a conda environment if you'd like. I already have this set up. But either way, it's very simple. Um, Perturbify is installed on the Docker that we're going to be discuss that you're going to be using throughout the workshop, so you don't need to worry about installing it right now or anything. Okay, so um, I'm going to go into detail about the two features of Perturbify. So first, the first feature is the test suite. Um, so the test suite allows you to test the executables of Perturbo. So the two executables were Perturbo.x and QBSupport.x. We have two options. You can test just for Turbo.x, in which case it will skip a bunch of tests, or you can test both. The reason why you wouldn't want to test both every time is because this takes like much longer, like um, maybe up to like seven times longer. And um, a lot of times if you're just modifying for Turbo.x, that's what you really want to test. Um, let me go to the Perturbify website real quick. Okay, so here's the Perturbify website. We see that the two features I mentioned, post processing and test suite, are like two of the main um, links here. So if I go to test suite, um, it's very well documented here how to run the test suite. So um, you can follow it pretty clearly, and um, it'll tell you how to run both executables or just one executable. But I've summarized the main points here. So um, I'll just do like a little quick demo here. Okay, so I'm going to um, go back to my Perturbo repo. Okay. All right, so I'm in the Perturbo repo. Um, remember I said that there's this like pert src, qd to pert src, and then this test folder. Um, if we go into the test folder, This is basically where all of the test suite um, input files and reference files take place. So it's a little confusing, but just to be clear, we're using methods from Perturbify, like this run test, this run test dot pi is going to use Perturbify to actually like, run the test. But all of the, but the reason we're doing it in the Perturbo repo is because that's where all the input files and that's the reference files are. Okay, so then the next step is to go to this config machine folder. It's kind of like analogous to um, how we chose like the correct make.sys file. 
uh, or, are, or the are desirable make us as well. There's several different ones here um, and that you just modify for your own needs. So here, let's say we just want to run for x. I will copy this one because this is the same machine for turbo. It's just going to run for x or just test for turbo.x. And I will change the name to, or I will copy it to configmachine.yaml. And this is the file that the test suite is going to um, use to get information on where all the executables are stored. So this is how you control like um, the number of threads you run it on, the parallelization, and also where the executable is. So here I'm gonna un like remove this module load for turbo because I don't want to like load the default for turbo on this um, supercomputer. And I'm going to add the path to my for turbo.x executable that I actually want to test. So So, okay, so all I've done is um, gotten rid of this module of Perturbo because I don't want to load like somebody else's Perturbo.x um, file. I want to test my Perturbo.x file here. And so I just like put the full path to it. And then with, um, with um, Perturbo kind of installed, I would just do like Python run plus. I would just um, run this command. I'm not gonna run it now because it'll take a second, but you'll be able to, you'll get a chance to do it yourself during the Python one. Okay, and then it's pretty similar to test 2 for .x. There's just an extra flag um, and some extra um, changes to these commands here. Okay. Are, are there common errors you see there? I mean, for the test suite? Yeah. Something um, that's happened 50% of the time if you install it the first I time, or I don't know. I don't know that we've ever had somebody install, like, install it for the first time and then run the test suite. Um, I, I think typically, like, you'll be fine. Like, I don't think you can get it to compile and then the test suite won't run at least the picture of X with no problem. So, but I guess we'll find out during the hands on one. Okay, and then the last major thing I want to cover is um, the post processing um, Python package. So, again, the two main functions are it allows you to export for turbo output data. From the perturbo output files to Python um, very quickly. And then there's like built in methods to visualize and analyze the data. Okay, so here's like the workflow. You run perturbo.x, of course, you have to do quantum strut zone if you prefer that x before your lab. But you run perturbo.x, you get the YAML file, you input that into perturbo.py, and then you can do things like um, track through the effective mass and just like one line of code, um, plot the bands and just a couple lines of code. Um, you'll get like an opportunity to actually run this during the hands-on sessions. Um, and then also like get just data about the um, material you're working with. So like here I'm working with silicon, I can use a lattice constant and um, bands, energies, etc. So it's just like a way to extract data from the perturbo output files and then also do like some calculations on it, like the effective mass of the convection band um, minimum and plot and fill. Okay. And then lastly, I just want to very briefly introduce um, the concept of Docker. Um, so um, as I said throughout this entire tutorial, I was describing how to install for Turbo from scratch. Um, but for the purpose of this workshop, we're going to give you um, what's called the Docker image, which is going to contain everything you need to run Perturbo, and it's like a very quick way um, to like get the Perturbo executable files along with all of its dependencies. So like um, you get the HDF, you get the operating system, the HDF5 library, Quantum Espresso, all of that you can just get really quickly with this Docker image, which will be described a lot more in detail in hands-on one. Um, but yeah, it's a quick and easy way to obtain an environment 
where you have the perturbed by executable and all those dependencies already installed. So that it also has like a very low like computational cost and memory requirements. So it's very convenient for like tutorial purposes and like simple calculations. But in practice, it's usually better to um, like if you're trying to do more complicated, more expensive calculations, for example, it's usually better to install it yourself because um, for one thing, the installation might not be optimized for your needs. And then also like if you want to modify the source code for whatever reason, um, it's easier to do it with it. Or you, you need to install it yourself basically. But I'll just like go to the Docker Hub. This is kind of similar to GitHub, um, but for Docker images. Okay, so I'm in the Perturbo and Docker Hub. If I go to tag, you can see that like there's different um, Docker images for different um, installation like uses. So like depending on the um, compiler you use, depending on the sort of parallelization is um, used, OpenMP parallelization. So yeah, so this is just like a very brief introduction to it, but you're gonna like learn a lot more than you thought. Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Um, we covered how to install Perturbo from scratch, um, which will be very useful for you to do after the workshop is over, but during the workshop you can use these Docker images and um, it'll be a lot more straightforward and fast for you to get started. So thank you and I'd be happy to take any questions.